Welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated.com. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me today for today's podcast, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. Andrew, got some news on Monday night. Carolina finally got to schedule a game. They've been looking to do that since the Virginia Tech game was canceled on Tuesday night. They were supposed to play tonight against the Hokies. That game was canceled about an hour and 15 minutes, or postponed, I should say, about an hour and 15 minutes before Carolina tipped off against Virginia on Saturday night at 6 p.m. Carolina taking on Northeastern on Wednesday night in Chapel Hill. It actually just came out earlier this morning. That's a 7 p.m. tip-off. They finally announced that game time. AJ, I want to ask you about it. We obviously talked to Roy on Monday uh, during the ACC weekly Zoom coaches call meeting, whatever the heck you want to call it. Talked to him for about 10 minutes. He kind of fielded a lot of questions about Carolina wanting to get a game. They, they obviously probably would have preferred to play an ACC opponent if they could because, you know, all their postponements or most of their postponements have come against ACC teams. Weren't able to really work that out. I know there was some conversation that Mike Bray said a few things about potentially playing Notre Dame, but we know Carolina wasn't going to go up there. They wanted a home game, and Notre Dame had already come to Chapel Hill, so that one ended up not working yeah, out. But, yeah. yeah, Carolina gets Northeastern, a team in the CAA, uh, sitting at 9-7, and 8-2 and two in, in the conference. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, that's the same conference as the likes of, you know, Elon and UNC Wilmington who are, you know, currently sitting at the bottom of that right now. But, AJ, what are your thoughts on, on this game? It, it's obviously, you know, not a huge, huge name coming into – to Chapel Hill, it's, it's not a, a game that necessarily is going to, you know, boost Carolina's NCAA tournament resume if they win. But what are your overall thoughts on Carolina just finding a, a team to play in and finding, like I said, a team right now that's sitting second place in their conference? So, I mean, by no means a pushover, just not that, you know, you know, elite program or a big, huge name that, you know, Carolina is usually playing this time of year in the middle of February. Well, very few people. In fact, I was looking around at different comments from Twitter and Facebook fan pages and stuff. And so people have called them Northwestern. So <laughs> a lot of people don't have any idea what Northeastern's all about. But North, Northeastern's had a, a decent program in the past in the CAA. They're second place in the CAA right now. And if you're second place in the CAA, which is not a, usually is not an awful league. It's had some pretty decent yeah. uh, history in the past. I mean, you're, you're a fairly reputable team. So you look at, okay, well, who have they played? What have they done? And this is, by the way, this podcast is not an analysis of Northeastern. Mm-hmm. We're going to discuss more Carolina playing some of these games and why. In this case, as far as looking specifically at North Northeastern, they do have a win over UMass, which is second in the Atlantic 10. Mm. And they played three of their Power 5 game, <clears throat> teams. They, they lost by six at Syracuse. They lost by 18 at Georgia and by 22 at West Virginia. And Kansas knows how that feels, so it doesn't mean that they're awful. Mm. And, and what I found interesting is that they did a pretty good job defensively against those teams. They held each of them under their scoring averages. Uh, collectively, they held them to 41.9% from the field and nine for 52 from three point range. Uh, they do, they, you know, they're a CA team, so they're not, they're not really big, but they have length in the perimeter mm-hmm. and uh, they could cause some defensive issues for Carolina. They're a pretty good defensive team. And it'll be interesting. If Carolina can get the entries and get stuff into the post, turn and score, then they should have no problem. They should dominate on the glass, they should dominate inside, but they have to get those entries. And Northeastern's best player is a guard who scores about 18 points a game. He's three times CA player of the week. So that's a matchup that Caleb Love is going to have to play well against. He's going to be yeah. challenged. So I, this is an opportunity for Carolina to, to, to get a win that's needed and to grow. And their NET right now is 144. Miami's is 152. Uh, Boston College is 169. So they're ahead of two ACC teams. Mm-hmm. I think Miami would probably physically be a more demanding challenge and more capable of, of winning in the Dean Dome than Northeastern. But 144 is not going to hurt you in the NET. It's not going to help you a ton. But what helps is getting a win. You need to get wins. Wins mm-hmm. help your resume. And Carolina needs to get some wins. They're 12 and 7. I think they need <clears throat> they need to get to about 18 wins to, to feel really good. And, and they need to have a couple of Q1 games. And by the way, they're still at 1 and 6 in the Q1. They have one win against Q1 teams. It's now Duke is the Q1 win. Pittsburgh is no longer the Q1 win. That's why I'm telling people, if Duke can win enough to stay in the top 75, be okay with it. Get let, get Pitt to win a few more games, get in the top 75. That would be two key win wins. Mm-hmm. And Stanford has got Stanford blew an opportunity against Colorado last week, mm-hmm. did not play well. That was an opportunity to really boost their uh, NET. But by the way, Carolina's 57, Stanford's 56. 
Mm-hmm. So if Stanford can get in the top 50, there's three Q1 wins. The only Q1 opportunities Carolina has left are FSU at home, as it stands right now, and at Syracuse. So they got to get wins. They can't mm-hmm. control a lot of the Q1 stuff at this point. So they got to go out and rack up as many wins as they can. And because the NCAA, with the whole COVID year, put a maximum of 24 games on each team. And then you're allowed to play three exempt games in a sanctioned tournament, which Carolina did in in the Maui Invitational. That means their maximum is 27. Now, the ACC originally had a 20-game schedule, so the non-conference maximum was four plus three. They'd already done that. But now since they know they're not going to play 20, Mm -hmm. whatever the number is below 20, they can actually add that many non-conference games. So let's say they don't make up Clemson. They're not going to make up Miami. No, Let's say they don't make up Clemson sale. to Virginia Tech. They could bring in two more teams like Northeastern. Mm-hmm. Next Thursday, they play next Tuesday at BC, and they play that Saturday against FSU at home. Why not bring somebody in like, like this in next Thursday as well? Get another W. Because look at it like this. They should beat Northeastern. It may not be a cakewalk, but they should beat them. Yeah. If they play them and two more teams like them, that gets them to 15 wins. They should have no problem winning at BC. That gets them to 16 wins. They – they own that zone It's against Syracuse, except really in the do, ACC yeah. tournament last year. They should win up at Syracuse. They should beat Duke at home. That gets mm-hmm. them to 18 wins. And if Stanford, Pitt, and Duke are where they need to be in the NET, and they win at, they win at Syracuse, um, that gets them to four Q1 wins. If they somehow beat FSU at home, then they're at five, and they're sitting pretty, and they're going to get a much better seed than anybody anticipates right now. That's why this game is important. You need to win. Mm-hmm. You need to play well. You need to get your rhythm going, and you need to improve. And this game will afford them that opportunity. And if they play two more like it, it those games will do the same thing. Yeah, I completely agree, AJ. I, I like what you said about it, it being important because we were talking about it a little bit off camera, but kind of reminds you of that first round, maybe NCAA tournament matchup, Absolutely. you know, playing one of those higher seeds, maybe 13, 14 seed in Northeastern that you're so accustomed to, especially when you see this time of year. It just kind of gives that vibe off because, you know, Carolina is usually – during a normal year deep into the ACC season slate would usually be that uh, like, like uh, this year as well. But with the cancellation and postponements they had, it, it's just kind of a case of Carolina. And this is based on what Roy Williams says, this is not my opinion. This is straight from the mouth of Roy Williams. Um, it was pretty clear yesterday that Carolina had got to a point where, you know, okay, we, we're not going to be able to play any ACC teams this week. We just want to play somebody. I mean, you saw the tweet that Carolina put out <laughs> on their on the Carolina basketball Twitter, basically just like a PSA, like, hey, man, like, we'll play anybody at this point. If anybody wants to play, just, you know, shoot us an email, call us, and we'll try to work it out. So I'm assuming that's how it probably worked out with North, Northeastern. But, they yeah, gave, I mean, go ahead, AJ, go ahead. Well, they gave – I mean, the ACC had time, had an opportunity to try to get yeah. this stuff straightened out. Mm-hmm. We wrote a – I wrote a piece for Sunday in which I identified the dates that those games could be made up. And they could still make up Virginia Tech on, on February 25th. I mean, that's really the only slot available for Virginia Tech because they both yeah. play the 23rd, they both play the 27th, and the Hokies right now are on pause, obviously, but mm-hmm. they could play the 25th. Uh, or not, uh, Hokies, uh, I guess they are on pause right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> God, mm-hmm. you can't, it's hard to keep up. Clemson it's impossible, well. man. It's impossible. They could play Clemson March 3rd. Carolina mm-hmm. March 1st is at Syracuse. The 6th, they're at home against Duke to close out the regular season. That Wednesday at home against Clemson, <clears throat> that can happen because the Tigers – play the previous Saturday and don't play again until the following Saturday. So they could come to Chapel Hill to make that up. Mm. But listening to Roy, it sounds like none of these games are going to get made up. It doesn't, no. And, you know, Clemson's going to have a backlog of stuff. And this is why I said last week I wrote that piece, scrap the ACC tournament this year. They did uh, too. You they could really still did. get your TV, most of your TV games by, by playing a Tuesday and Thursday all day of makeup games mm-hmm. that were postponed. So you can get a fuller schedule for everybody. You're going to get your TV opportunities and you're probably going to help the league get some, you know, you might, if anybody's on the fence, the NCAA fence, they're going to get two opportunities to win games instead of going to Greensboro, losing their first game, and then they're stuck. They have to wait. Mm-hmm. And the, in the, in it, the, ec- the equity, or rather mm-hmm. equality of, of the games of having to play. You might have a situation where someone could play for a few teams could play for a third time in the ACC tournament. And there's another situation like Carolina, Virginia tech, they don't play at all. Yeah. It's weird. So get these games made up. So you get a fuller idea of, of who the regular season champ is. And, and then you get in that bubble a week early. So everybody who goes to the NCAA tournament can have the seven straight days 
of negative COVID tests and they could begin the incident return when they're supposed to, mm-hmm. but that makes too much sense. So it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But, but, That's um, a great way to put it there. <laughs> but also a lot of questions I've gotten from people and I've seen a lot of complaints and, and people, fans of other schools are kind of poking fun at Carolina for playing Northeastern. Um, they weren't going to get anybody of significant substance to come no, in. No, not this if, time of year. No. If you're on the fence and you're a power five team, there's no way on earth you're going to risk going to Chapel Hill and losing. It's not and if it, you're right. a lock, you're not going to – why add that to what it's already – if you're in the Big 12, you're in the Big 10, or even the SEC, which has got a lot of really good teams, why would you add that game to what is already a daunting conference slate? So they're not yeah. going to get those teams. They're not going to get A-10 teams. Probably. They might get the middle of the A-10 to come in like a – you know, uh, it might, they won't get a Davidson, but they could get like a Fordham or a St. Bonaventure yeah, or something somebody like that. Like that or a couple yeah. will come in. I don't think that would do Carolina much good. Mm-hmm. At least in this case, they're playing a team that has, that was on a roll before they hit a COVID pause. They had won seven straight and then lost. They hit, then they hit a pause. They won eight out of the last 10. 10. Yeah, I think it's eight, eight out of the last 10 or something like eight that. Eight out of the last 10. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. They won eight out of the last 10. So, I mean, you know, you, you can't be too picky this time of year when you're putting out a tweet saying, who wants to play us? You're pretty desperate. You pretty much got to take whoever says yes, other than Lee's McCray. And by the way, you mm-hmm. brought up Lee's McCray before we started this podcast. Mm-hmm. Houston had an open date last week, mm-hmm. and they played a school called Our Lady of the Lake, oh, man. which is an NAIA school playing a shortened season. They're only playing Division One teams. Wow. Who also called Houston and wanted to play? Gonzaga. Oh, man. Houston said, nah, we're going to play <laughs> Our Lady of the Lake. We're good and on that. And that makes my point. Yeah, exactly. You know, Gonzaga would be fine playing Houston. They haven't made up that game with Baylor, and, it's, and that's good. We'll get that in the NCAA tournament, hopefully. Mm-hmm. But that's my point. Carolina, what, I think when I saw that they were playing Northeastern, I thought, kudos to Northeastern. Yeah. I'm going to just go down there and play that game. But I guess they're in a situation where it doesn't really matter in a lot of ways what their regular season record is. They just try to prepare to be the best team they can to win the CAA tournament and get mm-hmm. the NCAA bid. So – uh, and it's a great opportunity for them. And I'm sure Caroline's going to cut them a nice little check. Oh, yeah. And they can mm-hmm. come in and out. They don't have to deal with the uh, the crowd at, at Chapel Hill. It's it's a secret scrimmage that will be streamlined. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have an opportunity to make some money and, and beat North Carolina. Those kids have a chance to play in the Dean. Them. So kudos to them for accepting it. I, I think it's really cool that Carolina went ahead and did this because, you know, they were looking. They, they, they knew last week that this was a possibility. They would have to play. Uh, a team from outside the ACC. They kind of had their antenna up, but they weren't ready to pull the trigger until the ACC was given an opportunity to make it happen and it couldn't get worked out. So now they have this game and I wouldn't be surprised if there's one or two more. I'd like to see the Clemson game get made up at least. Yeah. Um, But because I really would like to see how Carolina handles Clemson's defense again from a guy who covers the team, Mm -hmm. the program standpoint. But um, at this point, they just need wins. They can get a couple more wins, Jacob, mm-hmm. and then take care of business. You know, they can win at uh, Syracuse and then have Stanford, uh, Duke, and Pittsburgh help them out and BQ one wins. I think Tar Heels will be in really, really good shape on Selection Sunday. Yeah, I agree. Uh, AJ, last thing I want to ask you before we wrap this thing up. You know, I will be at the game tomorrow. You know, as, as of the time of this recording, nothing's changed. Nothing's been canceled. You know how crazy COVID is right now. We will be at the game tomorrow if Carolina plays at 7 p.m. Um, what are you kind of looking for from a coverage standpoint in terms of – you mentioned how, you know, North, Northeastern is a team that Carolina should be beating. Um, you look at Northeastern's roster, pretty small team in comparison to what Carolina is accustomed to going up to in the ACC. A lot of guys con- kind of in that six seven six eight range is really as big as this North, Northeastern team gets in terms of guys that play a lot of minutes. So, you know, for Carolina, what are you kind of going to be paying attention for in – and what Carolina needs to do to win and, and kind of how they should be playing against a team like this, if that makes sense. Well, six, seven, six, 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 seven, six, eight guys, if they're mm-hmm. aggressive and they're athletic and they anticipate well, they can mm-hmm. hand, they can be just Cause fine trouble. against a bigger team. Yeah. We, Carolina's a big team. And we've seen at times that they aren't super aggressive and they don't yeah. anticipate well, and they, they don't cross their T's and dot their I's. Mm-hmm. So they have to do that to win this game. They're not playing Nichols State. Okay. They're not playing <laughs> Prairie View. Yeah. They're playing, a, they're playing a team that could that could be in the NCAA tournament representing the CAA. Mm-hmm. That's who they're playing. They're playing a team that 
that was competitive with Syracuse to play a team. Like I said, <clears throat> they held Syracuse, Georgia and West Virginia below their season scoring averages. Mm-hmm. They held them to under 42% from the field and nine to 52 from three point range. Mm-hmm. Now they don't rebound. Well, they don't generate a lot of steals. They don't, they don't block a lot of shots. They're not going to do those things, but you don't ha- defending the post doesn't just require post guys. Mm-hmm. If you can limit the entries and if you double well, you see what Virginia, I mean, Virginia is long, but they still doubled the post well, right? If you can limit the entries and, and cut off those lanes and screw a team up on the perimeter and force them to shoot a lot of threes, uh, then, you know, it, your length becomes an attribute because they are six, six and six, seven out on the perimeter. Yeah. So that, that can cause problems. Carolina's going to have to play well to win this game. They don't oh, have to yeah. play great, mm-hmm. but they have to play well. And by the way, Syracuse was two for 18 from three point range against this team. Wow. Syracuse has length in the perimeter too. Yeah. They, I watched some of that game. I remember it was on the ACC network and they were having trouble shooting over those guys. So, uh, you know, well, Roy would, Roy would probably say, you know, this ain't slippery rock. <laughs> it, it, it ain't slippery rock, man. We're far from that. Yeah. It's, it's going to be going. It, it, it's good. I think, you know, it's just going to be exciting, at least for me. And our, we just haven't got to cover a lot of Carolina home games, games this year. You they know haven't what I mean? played a home game since January 23rd. Unbelievable, I man. Mm-hmm. I want games. I want to cover games. I want to see this, t- see how this team progresses. I want to chronicle their story. And it's very difficult to do when you have empty champ chapters. Yeah. And so many chapters have been ripped out and you have to rewrite everything and reposition everything. I want to see this team get on, get into a routine that they can rely on again to see who they are. I mean, whether they win or not is not an issue to me. The issue to me as a guy who covers them is who are they? Our job mm-hmm. is to tell people who they are and give perspective to who they are and perhaps where they're going. And we can't do that when it's stop and go, stop and go, stop yeah, and go all the it's time. It's impossible, yeah. and, and Roy needs to know, too. I mean, it's challenging for them. You wrote a piece that we ran on Monday about how mm-hmm. the challenge it is for them just to kind of have the to have the right routine. You're talking about a bunch of young guys on this team that have never been through the traditional grind of the ACC. So next yeah. year is going to be their first time, knock on wood, uh, <laughs> that they're going to go through a traditional grind. And it is a challenge. And this is usually a time of year where Carolina thrives because the way Roy paces the season, the way he lays things out, you know, they add stuff as they go on. Some programs, what you see in late November is the same basic approach that you're going to see in late February. Mm-hmm. And they don't improve that much. Carolina re- historically gets a lot better because they add things and they yeah. tweak things. And it's kind of hard to do that when you're not playing half the games on your schedule. And that's been Mm -hmm. the case for the last month. I have seen them in person once since Pittsburgh. That was at Clemson because no media was allowed. No media was allowed at Duke. Mm -hmm. All right. And well, I've seen Pittsburgh at Clemson at Duke and at Virginia since then. Mm -hmm. And nobody, none of us can get up to Virginia because we all got caught in ice. It's like a war zone. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to see them in person. I want to do my job and Mm -hmm. I'm excited just to see what the heck they look like. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice, man. I'm I'm looking forward to it as well because you know I've I've been it, it, any of the home games I can be at this year I've been at and um besides the state one because of the amount of media that was trying to get into that one, but it's just gonna be fun to to get out there and you know after the game record of three things with the Smith Center backdrop instead of doing it over Zoom all the time, man. It, it's it's nice to actually watch the team in person and and kind of get that you know different perspective because it's just such a different vibe when you're there Absolutely. in the flesh than it is watching on TV, especially when you're talking to the team. I'm yeah. excited. I want to do my job. This mm-hmm. is how I'm wired. I, yeah. I just, I don't care who they play. I just want to go see them play. I want to cover it and see what they're all about. I exactly. can't wait for the, for, for the, for the, 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 the what the Tyson Walker, Walker, uh, <laughs> Caleb Love matchup, which I'm sure no one ever would have thought they would ever say in their lives, but <laughs> old AJ's thinking that right now on Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. morning. Exactly. Looking forward to it. Won't be able to sleep tonight. You'll be too excited, man. <laughs> <laughs> as always guys i appreciate y'all watching we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up right here if you haven't um you know be sure to check out our website at tarhillillustrated.com i'm gonna go ahead and plug this real quick if you are a subscriber to our website tarhillillustrated.com i know there's been a lot of questions we've been getting on our boards and on twitter about how to watch the game it's on acc network extra i'll put a link below um in the description with a little thread we started on how to watch it like i said you have to be a subscriber to see that but if you guys are curious on how to access that, I'll go ahead and put that below so you guys can check it out because it, it can be a little bit tricky. It won't be a, a regularly televised game as most Carolina games are during the season. So that's going to do it for us, guys. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and we we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.